love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Today we continue our topic about fishing in Soviet Union. And as I mentioned earlier in my previous videos, most uh, local people in our village in the northern Ukraine, I wouldn't call them fishermen. They were mostly like gatherers. They went to gather fish. It wasn't really fishing for fun. Nothing, of course, catch and release. And most of the people, like my grandfather, uh, they used nets. Everything, of course, was um, handmade. You couldn't purchase anything in the stores. And of course, uh, fishing with the nets was illegal, but because it was so out middle of nowhere in a village, it was hardly any inspectors. So I don't remember ever problems for my grandfather or other his neighbors uh, with their style of fishing. So what my grandpa did in the winter, uh, he would be making new nets or fixing old ones. Um, also, you couldn't uh, purchase the floaters for your net. So on the top, you know, so your net should float. Uh, those floats, so-called poplovki, uh, it was made out of uh, birch bark. So it was handmade. You know, they peeled the bark of the white birch trees and then they roll it. I think maybe they steam it, then roll it, and it stays in that uh, shape, um, like a cylinder shape. And that's what they use for floaters for their nets is... Uh, uh, birch um, bark and then of course they uh, had weights whatever they can get weights also was, was handmade or maybe they use like a heavy big nut from some heavy duty equipment so that was uh, the first style of fishing that my grandfather did is uh, going in the morning or in the evening going to the river and some lakes and he will leave the net, set them in the water, and then next day he'll come back and he will pull the fish out and maybe relocate the net a little bit, trying to catch more fish, or if there was no fish, then he will pick some different location and drop a net again and come back again next day. In one of my earlier videos, I already told you guys the story how my grandparents uh, tried to survive and during collectivization in the 30s, in 1930s, it's when the Soviet government was confiscating bread and other crops from peasants. And there's according to some people that up to 3 to 5 million Ukrainians died uh, from starvation those years. But mostly it happened down south. In the northern Ukraine, although uh, food was always confiscated, uh, fortunately people had forests around and rivers so they could fish, of course it was illegal, it was against the law, they didn't let people fish, and then they could go, of course, in the woods and pick mushrooms and berries. So that's what my grandparents did. At night, they would sneak out and they go in, in the darkness to the river, so no one see them fishing, and they used so-called bredin. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a fishing net, but it's made to be dragged in the water. So it has like a big bag in the middle and then two wings. On each end you have uh, wooden poles that you hold on. And then of course you got floaters on the top and little weights on the bottom. And you pretty much is like a drag net. You just drag it um, through the river or through the lake trying to catch fish. And what my grandparents did, my grandma was walking in the, along the shore like waist deep in the water dragging the bredin and my grandpa would be on the boat uh, paddling and dragging the uh, same way too and that's how they quietly fished in the, at night to get some uh, food uh, to put on the table so that's the fishing uh, with so-called uh, bredin and it's, of course it's really heavy uh, it's really hard to drag because you drag a lot through the weeds and it's all being catched 
and uh, because you gotta watch out for government officials and you know, you can only do that type of fishing during the summer or fall when the water is still warm because you have to be mostly you have to be in the water so that's another kind of illegal fishing that uh, people did uh, it was it was breeding and so that's usually young people could do it because older folks it would be way too hard so my grandpa never done it later when he got old he preferred just the regular fishing nets Another fishing tool I would call that my grandfather used and a lot of other his neighbors. Not everyone fished in our village. Uh, like in that area where my grandpa lived, there was uh, two more guys that were fishing every day. And they were kind of like a little bit competing between each other for the best uh, fishing spots. But other people uh, didn't fish that much. Um, so the, this tool is called Nerit. And it's pretty much the device with the net that you set up in the creeks or some spots in the water where you think fish is. And also fish will uh, wander inside and get trapped. And then, of course, you, like in case with the nets, you go there once a day and you check your uh, near it to see if you have any fish. And I remember I did uh, try that with my friends. Uh, we had a couple old uh, nerets from my grandpa. And we tried it. It was pretty good. But I said, it's always, it's also harvesting. You just place the traps for the fish. And then you come back and check them out, see if you catch anything. Another uh, tool which is similar to neret was so-called kovsh. And that one is actually made out of thin uh wooden branches of usually of the willows and that was a pretty complicated to make so of course it's all made by hand and those were primarily used to catch um viewn that fish that look like a snake and a lot of times it was used in the winter uh, that my grandpa will break the ice set up near it and then that fish gets attracted because they need oxygen because everything is covered by ice and they'll go for air and they'll get caught into a uh, kosh. But that was a, I don't know how long it will take to build one of those. And had a plug on one end. Uh, so pretty much a uh, fish comes from one end and gets trapped. And then you remove that uh, plug made out of like a wad of uh, weed. Uh, and then you just shake out the fish out of it. So that was pretty interesting uh, catching fish by kosh. In middle of 80s and early 90s, there was a new um, device called televisor. At least it was called in our area televisor, like TV set. The TV, uh, some people call them ekrane or screens. So that's like a mini uh, fishing net. It has a metal rod on the bottom for weight. And then you got a wooden top rod and a floater, of course. And those you just, because they're pretty small... Uh, usually a person just cruise around on the boat um, by around the river and he's pretty much watching if you notice a, a bunch of fish in some area he just starts strategically dropping those televisors all the way around uh, trying to trap the fish so those were way easier to handle because you know when you work with the fish in that it's a lawn you know it can be my goodness 20 feet long 30 feet long so it's pretty hard to carry it uh, pretty hard to pull out of the water Televisors, they offer a way easier way of handling. You know, you drop it in the water, then you have a long rope and a float. Then when you're ready to pick it up, you just grab the float and grab the rope and uh, pull the uh, televisor up and you got your fish. Some people also use this device called Pauk. Um, I only noticed that uh, people are doing it a couple of times, usually in the shallow lakes. And uh, what it is, is pretty much another <laughs> net. And then you have a long pole, uh, which this net is attached. And you lower it in the water. And you might want to throw some bait, like uh, pieces of bread or corn, to attract fish. And then you rapidly pick it up, the pauk, which pauk makes spider. And they hopefully have some fish in it. So that was another interesting device. Uh, so people be just lowering it, and then dropping some bait sit and waiting for a little bit and if they see some motion their fish going for a bait they just rapidly pick up uh, the stick and hopefully there's a f fish in it so that's catching fish with pauk uh, with the spider 
And of course, uh, if you do fishing, you need to have a boat, and you couldn't really purchase boats in Soviet Union, so there was a handmade and boats, uh, flat bottom usually, and uh, I knew only one guy in our village that actually had a motorboat, so that was very unusual, otherwise everyone just, you know, you have your boat parked there at the river, there'll be um, like a thick pole driven into ground by the river, and then every that wooden boat has a chain, so you just lock your chain to that pole, and that's how you uh, leave your boat overnight. And um, in order to make them water, say so waterproof, because it's just the boards connected together, the bottom will be uh, covered with tar. And uh, once you cover it with the tar, you want to keep it in the water because it makes boards swallow and they become thicker, and they uh, then it keeps the water away stays pretty tight but if you drag the boat outside out of the water then it boards get dry and they shrink and then you have gaps so if you're planning to use your uh, boat all summer you keep it in the water but of course if there was heavy rain they need to get so-called vitripachka and also handmade out of wood and you just get the water out of your uh, boat which we say lotka in russian and in the winter, then depends. Uh, if you are want to make sure no one will steal it, then you bring the horse, borrow the horse with the buggy from the collective farm, go, you know, ride the horse to the river, load your boat on the buggy, bring it home for repairs or to put the new layer of tar and store it maybe under the roof. And other people will just leave it sitting. Um, they just drag it on the shore, flip it upside down and just leave it sitting on the shore till the next season. And as I said, only one person I knew, uh, he had a motorboat, but only one time he gave us a ride. He, his boat was made out of aluminum, so it was really unusual. And um, since when you're fishing, you want to be quiet, so he didn't like to use the motor. The motor was just in his garage, but he would uh, just use that uh, aluminum boat and it was awkward because, you know, back was wide. That's where you install the engine, motorboat, and uh, the motor for your boat. So that was an interesting guy. But I remember that one time he gave us a ride, and I remember I was so impressed because I was going so fast in the boat. It's the first time ever I actually experienced to be in a Russian speedboat, and that was really neat. Um, and, of course... Uh, as I said, uh, all this type of fishing was technically illegal. As, and as I mentioned earlier, you, if you get caught, at least you'll get your nets confiscated. They might take away your boat and you might have to pay some fines. But I don't recall in our village anyone being caught because, as I said, we lived so out of the middle of nowhere and no one bothered because usually those people come by the boat. And it was a really long ride um, to get to where my grandfather fished. But closer to like Kiev and the big rivers and big lakes, uh, that was uh, patrolled pretty intensively. Um, they also had a people helping. For example, there was so-called uh, Galuboy Patrol. Uh, that was the kids that uh, signed up and participated with uh, watching for braconieri, which is pouchers, you can say, uh, people who fish illegally. So they just walk along the river shores, and if they see some illegal fishing, they will just report. Uh, they, of course, don't want to mess with the adults who do, who do the illegal fishing. Uh, the funny thing about Galuboy Patrol is um, that Galuboy has two meanings. So it's a similar to the word gay. You know, it used to be, uh, it meant happy. And now it mostly means um, homosexual. Well, Galuboy has a meaning that means blue, so blue patrol because water is blue color. But also that we use the word Galuboy uh, for the gay person. So it kind of became more sounding funny later in the 90s because when you say Galuboy patrol, it's like gay patrol. That's what it sounds. And this is how the... A badge looks uh, for Galuboy Patrol. That's what kids would wear on their chest, um, being a member of their organization. 
And uh, besides watching for uh, braconieri, the people who fish illegally, they in the spring they would walk along the river and watch if the little baby fish will get trapped when the waters recede, and they might just dig the channels and help the baby fish go back in the river. Uh, so they help uh, help little fish to survive. So, all right, so this is another uh, story about fishing in Soviet Union. Uh, now we got this topic covered. I hope you guys enjoy it. And, of course, we had winter fishing. We call it winter fishing, ice fishing. And um, forget about that. Sorry about that. My grand, uh, my father did that. My grandpa, his only type of uh, fishing in the winter he did is was going to the uh, lakes and breaking the ice and placing Kovsh, uh, to fish uh, for that uh, viewn fish that looks like a snake. But my dad did a little bit of uh, ice fishing, but mostly there was guys getting together. They, they hardly uh, brought any fish back, but had a good time because they had to stay warm, so drink a lot of vodka to keep themselves warm. So my dad was always brings maybe two, three fishes, and he'll be uh, barely walking after all day of uh, staying warm with vodka on on the lake so i hope you guys enjoy this story and we'll talk to you soon thank you very much